Ah, welcome to CP Time, the only show that's for the culture. Today, we're going to talk about hip hop. And I mean real hip hop. Not this new school trap mumble rap where you can't even understand what they're saying. Hubbada, hubbada, Vicodin, and hubbada, Perkins, and hubbada, hubbada. That's not lyrics. That's the sound Fred Flintstone's feet make when he's driving off. His feet just joined the Migos. No, today we're going to talk about old school hip hop. Legends like DJ Cool Herc, Grandmaster Flash, Run DMC, and of course, my short lived group, Regular Roy and the Trapezoids, who broke up right after we took that picture. Had a huge argument over what exactly a trapezoid is. <laughs> Didn't record a single track. Kiss my ass, Leroy. <laughs> Tonight, let's discuss some of the seminal moments in the birth of hip hop. Starting with the 40th anniversary of Rapper's Delight, the first commercially successful rap song. Rapper's Delight got everyone rapping. In fact, thanks to Rapper's Delight, hip hop went so mainstream. It even led to stuff like this. And every rapping cat I know drinks yeah. Miller Lite. Ain't that so? Thankfully, hip hop survived that commercial. But barely. Now, Rapper's Delight might be the reason rap went commercial, but what gave hip hop its flavor was undubitably the sound of the record scratch. And a lot of people don't know this, but the record scratch was actually invented by accident. A young DJ by the name of Grand Wizard Theodore was practicing in his room when his mother came in and he stopped the record with his hand, which led to this. <laughs> That's right. That sound was accidentally created by a young black man trying to avoid an ass whooping. <laughs> and now it's the signature of hip hop. It's also the sound of when some shit didn't gone wrong. The condom had a hole in it. <laughs> What do you mean that wasn't beef? <laughs> you may be a dentist, but that ain't my mouth. <laughs> but before you could scratch on a turntable, you needed a turntable. And that was one of the biggest obstacles for aspiring hip hop DJs. Turntables were too expensive. Luckily in 1977, an act of God changed the course of black history. A massive blackout hit New York City, and in the ensuing chaos, over a thousand stores were looted. Now, I'm not going to be the one to say that black people had anything to do with it, but let's just say that the next day, there were a bunch of brand new DJs in New York City. A coincidence indeed. Now, before you judge those people who looted on that fateful day, remember that looting can lead to some beneficial side effects. Black people looted, and now we have hip hop. White people looted, and now we have museums. As you know damn well, those mummies didn't just walk themselves into that museum. Now, that historic night in 77, my Uncle Bebo also took part in the looting. But because of the darkness, he couldn't identify what he was taking. He thought he stole two turntables. Turns out it was two lazy Susans. <laughs> he never did become a DJ, but he could pass the hell out of some ketchup. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But before we go, I want to make peace with the trapezoids. Leroy, if you're watching this tonight, I'm sorry that I said a trapezoid is just a square with an attitude. <laughs> also, I'm sorry for having sex with your wife. <laughs> well, this has been CP Time. And remember, before the culture, Leroy kissed my son for me. Don't mind seeing him in a couple years. <laughs>